Uh, so I'm gonna give a give a uh, sh short talk about um, kind of what we see as as kind of the next wave uh, of Web three, especially um, uh, you know kind of thinking about like reflecting a little bit on the day um, and then uh, thinking about um, kind of what's coming ahead. And I want to give you a preview of tomorrow. Uh, so we we the way that we structured this um, uh, the summit was uh, that we decided to have kind of a lot of the presentations of of kind of the status quo today and what's com kind of coming ahead um, now in, in, in the first day. And we wanted to kind of reserve uh, time tomorrow with with um, all the folks involved in the infrastructure ecosystem for, for IPFS to, to really think about the future um, and think about uh, things that are coming ahead. So we've heard a lot of things from, from many folks now of what people are working on and what's coming. Um, tomorrow is we want to orient towards um, towards a, a few more discussions like that, a few more developer tools that, that we want to uh, discuss around there. Um, also talk about uh, Filecoin and, and, and how it can it can be useful to you um, and and what, what the opportunities for integration and business uh, kind of appear appear in that horizon. Uh, and then also create uh, some space for for kind of standardization and, and formalizing of some of some APIs and, and plenty of room for discussion. So we we kind of have the lightning talks and and some kind of unstructured session time uh, for any kind of discussions that people may want to have. So we really want like the, the goal was to kind of um, kind of do a roundup of kind of where we were at today uh, in day one and then in day two um, kind of look towards the future and and, and think about possibilities. Uh, so uh, you know, with the Web3 space is, is growing a lot. Uh, every year, it gets it gets much better. Um, this whole space has grown, you know, slower than the the the, the, the social network um, space grew. Uh, if you count kind of the the social network spaces like you know 2000 through 2006 or something like that. Uh, but if you if you think of like the early days of social networks in like 95, 96, uh, it's actually kind of kind of similar. So it really depends on when when you start counting. Um, we're definitely seeing a ton of acceleration. In the latest, you know, year or two, as as the uh, finally we're solving a bunch of difficult infrastructure challenges that are enabling a lot of applications to to um, uh, to reach uh, consumers, and especially things that that require um, really good UX, right? So a lot of the tooling for 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 wallets and how you would use contracts and all that kind of stuff that is getting getting all smoothed out. Um, we're, we're also getting into a point where where we're figuring out how deploying. Um, DApps uh, and and just feel can feel a lot more like mainstream applications, right? So some of the work um, recently with with um, uh, the, the domain names and and with um, uh, uh, parties like like Textile and Fleek and others have made it made the experience of deploying something into Web three a uh, very very similar to deploying something in Web two, and in some cases I think actually better. And like that that is a, a really really hard bar to hard hard bar to hit. And once we're there, um, then we, we we should see a lot more. Uh, a lot more developers uh, start moving over. So you know the, the ecosystem grows all the time. This is this is a snapshot of of things going on. There's there's a lot of applications that that I hear about that, um, uh, and and end up not not here because kind of come and come and go and so on. Um, definitely, if you know of things that that are in the FS ecosystem and are not in this diagram, uh, please PR it in. This diagram is is uh, flexible for that for that reason. Uh, but look, there's a ton of amazing applications and a lot of systems that that uh, build on IPFS and and are on our um, Really having great success doing so, um, and a lot of it is really thanks to thanks to all of the people that that um, that work on the infrastructure and, and the developer tooling that enables these applications. So a lot of folks um, that are able to build products and build build systems can do so because of of uh, the help of people running the pending services, running gateways, running all of the infrastructure that powers these applications. So um, we've been reflecting on on how we can how we can help uh, help the builders uh, to to kind of build out for um, for the whole ecosystem. Um, you know, we, we saw things like uh, you know browsing the web is getting a lot easier through the latest integrations in browsers like Opera and Brave, um, and and you know things like Companion and MetaMask uh, that that uh, definitely things are a lot smoother and, and get it smoother every every uh, every month or so, and and the um, kind of move to being able to host websites and apps like uh, th this just I think now in like the last couple of months, we've hit a really nice sweet spot of being able to to deploy a website um, very easily in a normal Web2 flow and have have the whole stack be be totally Web3 oriented. Um, and this this is going to enable a lot of different different applications to to start uh, moving over. So I think at this point, um, the the tooling works really well enough, and the product UX is good enough that um that we can think of uh, of larger more more mainstream broader broader marketing efforts to to um 
to really, really get get um get a lot a lot of users. I think at this point is, um, you know, compared to say a year ago or two years ago, uh, when pro UX and product UX wasn't really there. Uh, this has been a really transformative thing. Uh, I, I wanted to to give a shout out to to a few um groups who've who've um. Uh, have really worked on on compelling products. Um, one of them is, is, is Audios here, where where they've done a ton of like uh, hard work around the product UX of delivering kind of an audio music player um, that feels totally like a Web two Web two style of experience with a full you know proper Web three protocol all the way down in the stack. Um, this is a great great application you should check out. Um, it, it's it's pretty compelling how how high quality the experience uh, has gotten. And there's of course there are there are small teams so. Uh, probably um, won't have nearly as many features as things like Spotify and SoundCloud and so on, um, but it, but it's pretty impressive what what uh, what they've achieved. And the other, oh, I'm missing my slide. So the other one I was going to mention was um, uh, was Haven and, and Open Bazaar, who who's done uh, an enormous amount of uh, of work getting the the um, all of the mobile tooling to work really really nicely. And and that whole area is 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 uh, uh, starting to grow. Like you can have you know proper IPFS uh, Web three apps uh, in in that environment. Um, so and again, all of this is possible thanks to thanks to uh, you know, uh, service providers um, and, and infrastructure builders, right? So things like the gateways um, that really make it accessible for a lot of folks that that um, whose browsers don't yet run IPFS directly, um, or or you know running gateways like uh, we run one of, one of the gateways, and so we we see a lot of the the difficulties that um, that running one of these these kinds of things uh, takes. So um, yeah, we we are kind of like used to the the, the awesome volume growth. Uh, uh, over time in the network, and so th thanks for for taking a, a big part of of making that possible, and, and putting services. So this is one of the key things, and and there are more here that, that I, I we should get all the logos. We should probably have a website where we can see all of the pinning services listed, um, and and really thank you for for making it possible to build a whole bunch of applications and and smoothing the the interface, um, and and making it much easier for people to to actually use IPFS and and uh, be able to rely on it for for important important business cases. Um, so I think, yeah, we, we should all feel really proud of, of being able to support and enable all of these, these applications. And there are more um, every, every month. There's a ton, ton of new stuff happening. Um, uh, our goal with, with setting up this, this um, summit and kind of starting to kind of form this, this community of infrastructure builders is to, is to help share a lot of the knowledge, help um, make connections where, where possible, and, and help um, see how we can help you uh, enable others and 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 have like very successful businesses that that um that uh that, that can grow and, and and so on and, and with that in mind um i want to i want to um preview some of the the, the stuff uh, for 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 tomorrow so uh i think one, one of the big questions that i've gotten uh, a lot um in the last few months is like hey how can us infrastructure providers uh, participate in all the Filecoin ecosystem growth and and how will pinning services interact with Filecoin, right so pinning services store um Data and and uh, and and they they charge users for that. There's a whole bunch of developer uh, tooling that that uh, pinning services kind of orienting around. How will that interplay with Falcon and, and what are the opportunities for pinning services in Falcon? So we'll cover a fair amount of that tomorrow. Um, we we also I also want to cover some use case specific opportunities. Um, there's a bunch of stuff around you know thinking about backing up developer assets, being able to think about um, you know package managed registries, VMs, containers, and so on. All of these developer tooling use cases are are now um, starting to really shine on 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 IPFS. All of the work on on distributing containers um, is is a uh, is that um, uh, Edgar and, and other folks have been been working on, and 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 there can and then so on, and improving BitSwap, uh, the latest release, and and um, you know improving the distribution for for um, for data. So these developer tooling use cases can finally be um, be uh, uh, tackled and that those represent in really enormous amounts of, of data and so those sort of think are really good opportunities for all kinds of infrastructure builders especially um, especially pinning services right so imagine being able to store and distribute all of docker hub which is a huge amount of data um, faster and better with IPFS and then having pinning services be able to kind of um, help replicate a lot of it and, and back it up and, and so on so I think this is like a really strong opportunity for the community as a whole um, and I think it'll take um, it'll take kind of some amount of coordination of thinking about the use cases, the toolings that are the, the tooling that is missing, and and how all the different pieces can plug together. Um, I think we can all think of the problem end to end and say, okay, great, like you have a bunch of containers here, you want to get them from from these these uh, places, you want to pack all of them up, you want to be able to serve them really quickly. 
and then there are developers in with you know um, data centers and, and local uh, dev environments that need access to these containers and need to pull them really quickly um, and so on and you can imagine like the the connectivity flows in those networks but but you know thinking of the use case end to end and actually manifesting it in a way that's better product wise than than the alternatives that that people have today that that's like a much higher bar right so I think a lot of the tooling for for IPFS does a bunch of the the, the raw heavy lifting underneath the hood, but the, but the the interfaces are still really raw and hard and and, and um, it, it's hard for for most developers to kind of play around with it and, and use it. So this is I think a, a really great opportunity, um, and I think getting containers right, Docker Hub enables all the VMs and package managers uh, as well. So this is a really really awesome 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 possibility. Um, also want to bring up that bots are a big part of developer um, kind of life cycles and, and a lot of things are bots that people don't think about as bots like you know a, a script in a cron job uh, you know, is close enough to a bot um, but think of, of being able to to put in all kinds of automation where all sorts of static assets that are preview like previews of websites or um, things that don't fit in git like kind of like the large files that you don't want to push to to various git repos um, and maybe LFS doesn't doesn't work for your use case. All of that can be can be like good integration flow for for IPFS. And those are large assets, which again are a really good opportunity for for pinning services. Where um, if you can imagine kind of having a having a bot on GitHub that you can you can like add to either add an integration or just summon the bot with a with a message on GitHub and you know have it start uh, following your following your content and backing things up. Uh, things like video publishing um, we expect are going to be a, a really big Big deal in in the coming coming months and, and couple of years. Um, this use case is, I think, one of the, the biggest one for biggest ones for all storage, and this includes both the video distribution platforms like things like YouTube and DTube and, and so on, um, but also includes like the camera use cases that, that we just saw, where where people are are capturing the video and 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 maybe sharing it amongst a smaller group group setting, and also streaming. So a, a really big one is is just streaming to lots of people, um, you know, things like Twitch and so on, being able to do kind of a a um, peer to peer assisted uh, kind of thing, kind of Twitch uh, experience, that would be a, a really phenomenal, phenomenal place to be. And I really want to plug the work of Live Peer recently on, on getting the, getting, you know, summoning a cloud of GPUs to actually be able to do the transcoding in, in real time. So this is a pretty impressive uh, achievement. And, and that community has basically done all the, all the work to, um, to really get the, the video transcoding. Down to where uh, to where it really needs to be for a decentralized uh, application to really be able to to compete with these these groups. So again, another huge opportunity for pinning services to to um, you know kind of uh, if you're interested in video, kind of tackling that that use case and helping figure out what are the what are the pain points, what are the the use cases, what um what do businesses really need? Because oftentimes a protocol is not is not going to satisfy what the what the what the um, business use case demands. Uh, there's going to be products and tooling around that use case that um, that, that those groups are going are gonna to need. We also see see things like social media dApps finally being the, the um, possible things like um, you know things like Pinterest and and Twitter and, and Facebook and so on. Um, we we now have the the primitives for for feeds for social feeds things like threads. Uh, we have like encryption. Uh, we have user oriented uh, data storage and so on. All of these components are now are now there. Now we have to plug those components together and actually build uh, a decentralized Twitter type thing that, that really works and really scales. Like that's something that um, um, oftentimes uh, in the Web3 crypto world, we flagged, hey, let's make decentralized Twitter as, as, a, as a kind of uh, example app with, without fully realizing just how difficult to do something like Twitter with privacy, with moderation, with um, you know, reactions, like being able to count likes on a tweet that goes Viral really quickly and, and has you know millions of or thousands to millions of likes. Doing that in a, in a peer to peer way is extremely hard. And so you know when people suggested Twitter as like a, a uh, an easy thing to do, like the the, the magnitude of the difficulty here is, was not um, was not super clear. But I think we're finally getting there. We finally have the primitives to to build the first versions of these of these systems uh, to work well. Um, and it'll take it'll take a lot of work to scale them. But but I think we're 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 getting there. Um, now, it just things that I'm personally really excited about, and I think a lot of people in the community are excited about it, is games. Um, so you can think of game distribution platforms and games themselves as being able to be uh, stored and backed up and moved around with with um, with these tools. So um, think of the game distribution platform, something like the Steam Store, being able to be built over IPFS um, and pinning services and and platform and so on, where uh, 
uh, you can, you know, do host all of the static assets that are really big, like you know, large amount of of, of data storage for for a game. Um, Plus, do the whole you know store experience. We now have marketplaces on IPFS, things like Origin and, and uh, OpenBazaar and Haven and, and so on. So we know how to we know how to do that now. Is we can pull these two, two things together and do something that very few organizations have, have ever been able to do because of the bandwidth bandwidth constraints, right? So the the video distribution, so the game distribution piece here is so big that um that a lot of players have or a lot of groups have never been able to kind of compete with in these settings. Um, and we kind of have a, a pretty amazing unfair advantage, which is um hey, decentralization, it, this is, you, it's an open open environment where nobody's going to deny your game because because they, they don't like it or something. Or, 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 you know, the store doesn't, it's not going to censor your, your thing. And it has, um, you know, the peer-to-peer the -peer bandwidth distribution model, um, which is a, a, pretty, a pretty powerful primitive. Uh, so I think those two things can, can really enable um, fantastic game distribution platforms and ideally eventually, you know, cause a switch to the existing ones, right? So I think... Uh, like all great technologies, like you, the kind of like end game state is when when uh, the the killer apps have now either outpaced or caused the the original applications to kind of switch technologies. Uh, and then beyond the distribution platform, actually making the games uh, themselves and and think of of how to not just distributing the the binaries and the assets and so on, but but actually thinking of network games that are peer to peer. Uh, that would be be really really fantastic. And this uh, kind of uh, we're starting to see the beginning of this. Uh, with things like Decentraland and CryptoVoxels, which are really cool um, kind of beginnings of virtual worlds on um, in in Web3, and primarily those these right now are kind of very focused on the on the interactions and the tokens and the and the uh, kind of calling of programs in these environments. Um, but it, right now, I think a lot of the data is is, is uh, uh, I think Decentraland's data is, is structured as as, as I believe. I think it's compatible. I, I forget exactly, but um, I think it's very close. Um, I think CryptoVoxels is not yet in, in that environment, but I think it would be amazing to be able to look at these two these two systems and be like they're fully decentralized, um, you know, later this year or, or next year, um, and all of this data is 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 uh, moved around and distributed with with IPFS. I think this would be a, a fantastic kind of community oriented thing where uh, we would love to be able to have like meetups in in these environments in our future summit. Have it uh, have any one of these 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 places, and I think this is a place where a lot of infrastructure providers can can help land this by understanding these users, understanding their use cases, what they, um, what product areas they, they really need help with, and kind of tuning products for them. And so we, um, I sort of expect that uh, the certain pending services will find a really nice sweet spot with some specific sets of users and tune the product for, for those users. Um, and I think of that, that might be like a really kind of successful environment for, for, for the whole community. I um, also want to uh, plug things like large scientific data. There's a ton of open access public data that we can uh, that we can use, and that we can we can start distributing with 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 IPFS. So there's already a, a number of archives on on IPFS, but there, there's a lot more out there. Um, uh, earlier today, uh, the Falcon team announced um, Falcon Discover, which we'll hear more about tomorrow. Um, and and there are projects like Academic Torrents and others where there are these like huge data sets that are that are stored and distributed and are public access, uh, it'd be amazing to be able to kind of get all of these in, into, um, into IPFS and, and moving around with, with, uh, with um, pinning, pinning services. So if you, you know, are interested in, in pursuing these things, like, let's talk about it tomorrow because um, I'd love to kind of help facilitate some of, some of these things. Like for example, Academic Torrents, I think it's you know, 60 terabytes, 62 terabytes. We could totally store that and, and distribute it through pinning services uh, you know, this in a few months. Um, and and uh, PL would, would love to help uh, support those kinds of uh, those kinds of endeavors. So if if this is attractive, we can we can think of like uh, uh, PL paying for the for the cost of of a storage or something like that. And if people can can do the work of of actually getting that data and making it accessible. Um, now um, one one thing that that uh, has been requested a lot on on GitHub here and there, and there was some initial work on this uh, last year, but we would really like to kind of um, kind of accelerate is standardizing the pending service APIs. So, so this is, um, th think of the need for um, a lot of applications and tools to be able to kind of have a standardized pinning service API so they, they can bind to something and then they can try out, uh, try out different, different uh, systems and tools um, over time and, and, and um, they, they have kind of like, a, like some sort of stable API. And, and then that would also enable the FFS team to, to build out features that get closer to where pinning services are today and supporting the use cases that the pinning services have, if, if we can do it in kind of like a like an um, 
agnostic um, uh, kind of whole community oriented way. So, so tomorrow we'll, we'll have a preview at, a, at a, a potential pinning service API, and then we'll have a workshop to, to discuss it and, and see if, uh, uh, if, if it covers people's needs. Um, we're also uh, then being able to kind of plug in, in what, given those APIs, then seeing how we could integrate pinning services into products. That's a whole other part of this where, um, you know, imagine being able to integrate things into pinning, pinning services directly into IFS desktop or companion so that um, as you are, you are adding data to these, to these tools, uh, it gets kind of automatically backed up to pinning services. Uh, so we have some stuff, stuff, stuff on that tomorrow. Um, but then also looking at how, you know, crypto data wallets or marketplaces or applications themselves could, um, could uh, 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 support the pinning API directly so that then the users themselves can then select their pinning service um, and, then, and then kind of uh, store directly um, to that, to that uh, service. Uh, we also get a preview on, on the Falcon client, and I think this um, and how it works will, will, uh, will help probably inform some of the Falcon space uh, for folks. Um, and then we'll hear a lot about uh, uh, PowerGate, which is a, a really amazing tool that, that uh, Textile has been working on that kind of fills a, a, a huge gap in, in kind of developer UX between kind of the raw Falcon nodes and those interfaces and kind of how GoIPFS works, works today and being able to manage the life cycle of client deals, being able to make deals, understand what the deals are, and, uh, do, do kind of um, understand the, the metrics and analytics of, 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 um, of your deals and so on. And so definitely check out the PowerGate work you'll hear about it more tomorrow. Um, and, and again, there, there are a number of potential business opportunities for, for pinning services with, with Falcoin. So, so we'll cover a number of, um, of things around this and we'll dive into details on, hey, if you're interested in accepting Falcoin payments, how does that work? What um, do we need payment processors? Uh, we can talk through some of the, the, the ones that, that we're kind of evaluating. Um, hey, if you're interested in doing storage mining, how does, how does that work? If you're interested in doing uh, retrieval mining, how does that work? And then how do pinning services, how can pinning services interact with Falcon? And that's kind of two sides. One is a pinning service could take things from an application and then back them up to Filecoin while still either keeping a copy or just keeping the cache um, or do it the other way, which is pinning services can actually back up stuff coming from the from Falcon. So you can think of Falcon as, as being potentially both sides of the market for you. Um, and th there are potentially other services that you may want to offer as well that, that are useful to, to the Falcon ecosystem that, that we'll, we'll talk about. Um, uh, great, so I think that's, uh, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for a fantastic day. Uh, I've learned a ton and it was really great to see all, all the different use cases and different uh, different things that people are building. Um, I really think we're we're in this amazing formation stage that that reminds me of when when Ethereum had just um, around when Ethereum was getting ready to launch and launched, where a lot of the first primitives of of of, uh, of smart contracts were being figured out and a lot of the potential use cases were were made possible. So th it feels again like a like a pretty uh, serendipitous time where a lot of pieces that people have been working on for quite a while are finally coming together um, and it's going to enable a whole new wave of innovation. Um, and really looking forward to, to this sharing this next wave wave with you. All right, I'm gonna pause there and then open for questions. Uh, you do have a question from Thomas. He said, of course, everyone compromises in order to get things to work. How much do you think people have compromised since four years ago when we all first saw your videos? Good. That's a good question. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting, hard question. I mean, I think the probably the the hardest thing is getting things to work well um, and be useful to people quickly. So I think a lot of the possibilities, especially things like all the the IPLD work and what happens when you start diving into modeling data structures that way, um, could really benefit from longer time in kind of like research development, like a lot more time in research development to really flesh it out. And um, I think that there's been definitely a lot of compromises in, in a whole bunch of layers in the stack there to kind of push out pieces as we had them, which has been kind of difficult because you end up with like some things work and like some features work, but others don't and so on. And so there's been a lot of compromising there of, hey, we, we need to get stuff into people's hands and, and having people use it using the tech um, and there's, there's definitely been a lot of compromise uh, there. Um, I think there's also been compromises in from all adopters in like 
using tooling that that is that is evolving and changing and we, we do our best to try and keep stable apis and not break things but sometimes we break some things and uh because we need to improve the api and uh you know th there's been um you know a lot a lot of support there from from users you know understanding the vision and where things are, are headed but but uh taking the taking the time to to um to to you know deal with with, with it and make prs and file issues and all that kind of stuff so there's been been stuff there i think one in probably important compromising part at least uh from my perspective is um there are a few kind of features that i kind of really wanted early on sort of really fast um you know things like not sharing a bunch of duplicate data or having kind of private content encryption and so on that i really wanted baked in um closer to the protocol and those have rolled out either as user built user space tooling um or are now finally landing after a while so there's been um so that's that's kind of like roadmap pushback of things that are that are finally coming coming now the thing that, that i think is a an extremely difficult problem is um reader writer privacy this is one of the things that i think is critical to the entire web3 space especially um you know the the ability to have a web that is not spying on you and um, this is an, an extremely difficult problem um, that just we're, nobody's close to solving. And this is not not just us, but but um, but a lot of groups are not not remotely close to solving, and even in academia. And so that problem, I think, is is an extremely important one that I think the entire space, the, all of the, the decentralization and, and Web three space, has um, kind of had to compromise on, on on getting ship things shipped out there, even though you can you can lurk in these networks and and observe a lot of the traffic. Um, hopefully that, that answers some of it, but but I think all of it is like normal growing pains of a technology of a platform like this. Like it's it's a um, especially when you develop it in the open, right? Like you can take the Apple route of building everything kind of privately and then kind of just delivering the future for people um, and doing it in a very close way that takes you know maybe a decade and who knows when you'll get it. Um, or you can build things in open standards and and open source and and um, really drive for for open systems and that 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 means you have to build things and evolve them with with a community um, and you end up with something much more that gives power to people uh, as opposed to kind of lock people into systems i think i'd expand a little bit that like you know when you come at it from you know uh, an initial design or initial big picture um figuring out all of the, the tooling you actually need in order to bridge people into an ecosystem and make it accessible. Like one of the things I'm most excited about right now is the, the tools and services people are building that make IPFS extremely accessible to folks in web two, which is not like super hard in the, you know, everything must be web three from the ground up if you're not running an IPFS node locally on every single device that's like a full peer in the network then like you're cheating um but i think that 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 like really hard line is just not isn't responsive to the different scenarios we're seeing in the ecosystem we're like yeah you're gonna have nodes in browsers you're gonna have nodes in mobile phones you're gonna have nodes behind firewalls and you need to be more adaptive to that and that the the tooling we build up in response to that is actually one of those unanticipated opportunities for a ton of new businesses to uh, to emerge and um like I, I don't know if i'd call it a compromise it's also kind of a win that, that this is kind of what uh you know what the real path to success looks like 